Thank you for watching today. Today's video is a little different from my other videos. In the month of April is Autism Awareness Month and I wanted to do a series of videos regarding my journey with autism and the struggles and the triumphs that I've had ever since I known that I was diagnosed almost two years ago. Today's video will be focusing about masking and my journey with masking I just wanted to let everyone know I am sharing my journey, not someone else's journey that might have autism. Hi everyone, Katrina here of Paper, Pens, and Coffee. Welcome back to my channel. This is a different type of video. I have been thinking about doing videos like this for a very long time and then I talked myself out of it. The month of April is Autism Awareness Month. It's been for a very long time. When my son was a lot, a lot younger than he is now, I was heavily involved in it and then I stopped getting involved in the awareness of autism because when people would see him they said well he's fine he doesn't need anything he's not autistic enough so that of course hurt me as a mom and as a person so I'm like why be involved in a community that's not accepting of my son so uh, fast forward until 2021 when I personally was diagnosed with autism and officially with ADHD, I always knew I was ADHD. It's kind of a running joke in our family. And so the reason I am getting involved again on my channel here and only sharing my aspects of my experience with autism is because that's my journey. No one else's journey even if you've known me for a long time, my whole life, only for a couple of minutes. This is my journey. And there's a lot more of females being late diagnosed. Late diagnosed from meaning from age 18 until they're 72. I think online I met one woman that was 75 before she was diagnosed. And up until that point, she accepted for who she was but everyone just thought she was quirky and um i don't think there's anything wrong with being quirky at all so in this video i will be um going over a drawing that i i pre-sketched that um talking about masking and masking in autism not the mask that we've been wearing on our face because of covid but the mask that autistic people, especially females, before they're diagnosed or if they're ever diagnosed, hide behind. So we, and I'm just going to speak for myself, but we in general can then function in, in society. There's been a couple famous people coming forward saying that they are autistic and they've gotten all of the glory of like oh well look what she's doing this is amazing and everything so that's great but also i think there should be regular people like myself sharing about their journey so masking in general before i remove this and start drawing on it is when you try to Fit or fit into society or fit into a social norm, meaning that you, for myself, it was whatever the, however the girls were dressed within reason, because I knew some girls, especially in junior high, they were not dressing very politely. Um, I tried to wear the same things they did. Like if they had a pink top on with black jeans, I wanted a pink top and black jeans. If they were feathering their hair, I wanted to learn how to feather my hair. Um, when I was allowed to wear makeup, I would then, this is way before YouTube, so you, I would just, you know, watch the girl in the next mirror putting on her eyeliner, and then I would try to do the same thing. Um, there was, um, at times before I was, 
we had a TV, but then we didn't have a TV. And so the times when I was allowed to have a TV, I would see characters on TV and I guess I would mimic them or I would talk like them. And I thought it was regular because they were talking like that. Um, we'd have kids in our class that were from the South or from Texas and all of a sudden I would start getting like a Texas draw. Um, as I got older, if I watched too much British TV, I didn't go around with a fake British accent, but I used a lot of jargon from Britain. Instead of saying vacation, I'd say holiday. Instead of saying garbage, I would say, you know, bin. I, um, are you, instead of saying standing in line, I'd say, are you in the queue? Things like that. Um, and that I found out that was part of um, being autistic. Um, so I'm going to keep talking about it, but this is the paper. I don't know if the camera can pick up my drawings yet, but this is the paper that I created. Try, whoops. Trying to make this as low budget as possible because even though I do love editing my, um, my videos, I, I find it very taxing on me at times. And then like, am I doing it right? Is anyone going to watch it? And then I found out people don't even really watch people's videos all the way through. Sometimes they are only a couple minutes long. So I'm using um, Zebra. This is not sponsored or anything. I wish it was. Zebra markers. I have some mild liners. I have some click arts. And I have some other um, mild liners, as you can tell. Oh, brush pens different ones. Plus I have extras. This is what came with the kit. There we go. This is what came with the kit and this is what I had extras of. And this is in here. This was in the bottom. It showed all the holes. I don't know if I have a little piece. Oh, here it is. I have a little piece of it left over. And they had this and they only had um, the, the, the 32 markers that came in it. Well, that to me was a waste of space, so I broke it down and then put some of the markers over here and then my duplicates over here. So this is what I'm going to be using. So a lot of people don't understand is that when it comes to girls and masking, the one reason that I, my research, and I learned about this in college, because I went to the University of Arizona. I got a degree in education with rehabilitation and special ed emphasis. Oop, I already smeared it. Good job, Katrina. Um, emphasis in deaf studies. I worked with the deaf population off and on for about three or four years after there, after graduating in various jobs. And I will talk about jobs in another video because that's another thing I have learned about over the years about myself. But today we're just focusing on the masking part. And one reason it's more obvious of girls passing and not looking or acting as autistic as their counterpartners, remember 60% in the autistic world can use verbal skills. They may sound like me, they may not sound like me, and then only about 40% um, don't have a strong verbal communication. So there, remember, when you've met one autistic person, you've only met one autistic person. So I've practiced over the years that I've been making my videos to try to fluctuate my voice so I don't sound like a robot. But at times, I know when I'm talking to people in real life, that happens to me. So back to masking. Oops, I should have done this color. Is I like I was explaining before, is that um, you everyone wants to fit in. And so you're like, well, then everyone must be autistic because everyone wants to fit in. Well, it's a little more than that. It's when you are trying to fit in, but you don't realize that you're not fitting in, that you think people like you for who you are. 
but then you do something really strange or you bring up some odd topic that no one really cares about listening about, then you know the situation is not like you thought it was going to be. Um, I didn't watch a lot of TV in high school. Like I mentioned, we didn't have a TV a lot, um, a TV growing up. But when I was in high school, there was a TV show called Cheers, where there was a character called Cliff Clavin, if I'm picking the right character. And he would come in and he would just rattle off all of these non-essential information. Well, it turned out that's what um, I did. I did a lot of that. I would read People magazine and I'd read other things. And then when I would hear in a conversation about a certain thing, then I would rattle off, hey, did you know? And so people that knew me would start nicknaming me Cliff Clavin because... The, you know, they said I was acting like that character. It wasn't until I got into college, and I think there were reruns, that I found out who he was and what he did, and I didn't think it was that bad. So we're trying to be accepted by others, and there are a lot of different reasons why we want to be accepted. One is trying to make friends. You... There are, then I know some people are going to say, well, that's hard for everyone at first. Well, for me personally, I thought everyone wanted to be my friend. And so I was taught, you know, you be nice to your neighbors, they'll be nice to you. And that wasn't the truth of it. I don't know why they wouldn't want to be my friend and I didn't know how to ask them. So it was really hard for me to maintain friends. I did have a couple friends in elementary school and junior high. And then when we met up again in high school, I'm like, oh, hi again. And I just kind of picked up where we left off because I remember a lot of things. And they were just kind of like, oh, sorry, I'm busy. Or, oh, sorry, I can't do that type of thing. So we want to be accepted by others for social. Sorry, that's my dog, Martini. And one way we do that socially is mirroring others. And what I mean by mirroring others is not looking in the mirror, even though I drew a mirror here, is the facial expressions. Also, social behavior. So, for example, when everyone was wearing a certain brand clothing or everyone had a certain bag or was saying, you know, I don't know, like everyone would say, oh, totally rad. So, you know, of course, I would try to fit that into a conversation like, oh, totally rad. And then they would just like look at me like, okay, why, why are you saying that? So I'm going to draw a hair, a mirror hair. Yeah, it's in the camera. So that was a big thing for me. And then it was difficult when I wasn't able to be in those social situations because I wasn't asked to go along in those. But it's really difficult to stay social for a very long time for me. So what would happen sometimes is I would shut down. And I still do that as an adult, especially when I am not familiar with the situation, meaning I have never been to the place I am going to. I don't know the people. I've never met the people before, even though I might be going with a friend, that type of thing, uh, I just shut down. I will be polite. I will say hello. I will say, how are you? Things like that. 
because I was taught by my mom. I owe a lot to my mom because she would give me um, examples. She would practice with me. And she would say, okay, someone's going to meet you. How do you, how do you greet them? And especially when I went for my first job interview, which I got on the first time, I, I can thank my mom because she, she pretend, did pretend interviews with me and um, told me, you know, how you're supposed to look at the person, how you're supposed to sit, how to um, reiterate the, the question that they're asking you, things like that. So other things, um, you're, we're trying to be accepted by others, but others might find, I got ahead of myself when I talked about, might find what you do or say strange or, or unacceptable. Um, for example, you might have a a thing that you have to flap your arms or do this with your fingers when you're happy or when you're sad or just in a situation. Or you might have to rock back and forth to calm yourself down, things like that. And so masking, you try your best not to do that. And this and the in um, the community is called stemming that um, when you do all those type of things so here I'm going to fill in this one like I said uh, we mask or I mask because remember I'm not talking for all autistic people I'm just talking for myself unfamiliar environments so what I've done once I learned from my therapist after I was diagnosed is if you're in an unfamiliar environment, if you can go check it out before you have to go there. I thought this was brilliant. I didn't realize I did this with my son. Like the, before school started, we go and check the school out. Or if he was going to go to a party at a Chuck E. Cheese, we'd go to that Chuck E. Cheese and check everything out to see if it was too loud, if the smells were too weird for him, if he really wanted to go. And so I actually did that the other day. I went to a whole new doctor in a whole new building, and I had to drop off paperwork. That was my excuse. So I went in there, and I said, hi, I'm here to drop off the paperwork. But meanwhile, I was playing secret agent, man, <laughs> and I was scanning the place. And so I'm like, oh, where's the elevator? Oh, where's the doctor's office? And the day of my appointment, my anxiety was down. I didn't have to worry about getting lost. I didn't have to worry about, you know, all those things that I would have had before if I didn't scout out the unfamiliar environment. So right here going to somewhere where you've never been before sometimes you can't do that one place for me is when i traveled with my husband to israel i've never been but he had so he knew that i like checking things out beforehand so being with him was kind of like checking it out and that really helped because then I was okay went, um, wherever we went. So sometimes of like going to a new um, friend's house might be awkward. So if it's like a party or something, I always stayed like close to the kitchen area because that seems, you know, where you could just talk to people. Or I would just find one person that might be there. <laughs> and um, boy, these do not, these are not left-handed. <laughs> left-handed, um, yeah. Okay, I have to remember that. Okay. So yeah, here we go. We talked about restaurants also. Doctor's offices. And so... 
you have to put a certain mask on when you go to a restaurant or a doctor office or even a bowling alley. I freaked out at a bowling alley one time because I knew what a bowling alley was and all, but this particular one was very loud that night and I was not expecting it. I wanted to shut down socially and I wanted to go home, but that wasn't a choice. I had to stay. So those are, those are some reasons why we mask. Um, under the mimicking, we camouflage. I didn't realize I did this a lot growing up, thinking about it. I would try to act like other girls or I try to, you know, wear clothes like the other girls and my mom would say, knock it off, be yourself. But I'm like, I don't know how to, I don't know <laughs> what am I supposed to do? So it's over the years and I think it was easier in college because you're a little older and you don't have that high school thing going on. So if I wanted to wear my funky socks and my shorts, you know, I didn't have to worry about anyone that was going to, you know, make fun of me. Also, we want to look normal. The more normal we look, the less chance they think we're autistic. But now that I know that I'm autistic, I just, you know, if people kind of look at me differently I just like hey I'm autistic you know and you're gonna have to explain that to me again um let's see need to look normal oh where do you need or when do you need to look normal when we do the masking and while I'm doing this I would love to start a conversation in the comments down below with you guys who do watch this video or at least watch more than two minutes of the video of where do you feel that when do you have to mask I have to mask when I'm at work I'm a massage therapist I'm really good at my job but there's a certain presentation I have to give not and I'm not talking about professional obviously you have to be professional in your line of work but there's just a way that I speak and the way that I you know ask questions or answer questions that I normally wouldn't do and after about four hours it exhausts me so it's really nice to have breaks in between my clients also when do you need to normal Certain family events, when it might be your in-laws or a cousin that you don't see all the time and you just want to, you know, present yourself um, in any type of house of worship is another place I would find myself masking. Not trying to say that I'm holier than thou but just kind of that respect thing and just trying to show everyone I'm all right. So if you don't understand any of this, hey, it's okay. You're not going to hurt my feelings if you don't understand this. And studies have shown that girls mask four times more than boys do. That's why, as a female, we are looked over. I can't, oh, that's not going to work. We're looked over when we're diagnosed because we're so good at masking and looking normal and acting normal and answering the questions that are asked of us. And believe it or not, even to this day, Majority of the questions to be diagnosed with autism is for a young cyst male. Yep, they do not have one focused for the female mind. Also, need to look normal when so others will think that you're supposed to be there. 
What does that mean? Well, business functions. I used to go to social functions for my husband's work. And at the time, I was just a stay-home mom. And I would try to act like I was a business person, you know, that I was supposed to be there, you know, that they would think that I'm smart and um, <laughs> was supposed to belong there. So that's one of them. Um, masking can be exhausting, like I mentioned before. Because you're not allowed to be the real you. And what I mean by that is usually I'm, I think I'm pretty funny. Sometimes I'm sarcastic. Sometimes um, I can give you a couple zingers. Um, I might want to start, you know, singing the answer or dancing around type of thing. But when you're at work, or such, you cannot do that. But when you're with friends and family that love you no matter what, then you can just butt your hair down, as they say. Um, social convo script. This means, and I mentioned before, thanks to my wonderful mom, I have learned, and I did not know I was doing this, and I learned others do this too, I would have a conversation already in my head about what was going on. <laughs> so, for example, right before um, COVID hit, my husband and I were, went to a social event for New Year's. And that included a meal. And it turned out they had you sit socially. This is like, oh my gosh, this is like 60 days before COVID hit. So it was kind of like first come, first serve. So I spotted a table with these older people, meaning like in their 60s and 70s. And they're pretty much my jam. I can have a conversation with strangers in that age group. And so I found two places. And I got there before my husband did. I sat down. And I just started doing the common things like, hi, my name is Katrina, your name. Oh, where are you from? This is where we're from. How many days are you here? Isn't this wonderful? So by the time my husband sat down with his food, it was buffet, I had a social convo script going on. So I would introduce my husband and then I would go around the table and I would remember their names and what they said, just little tidbits. And that seemed to have the social interacting. So I had a social masking going on and it looked like, oh, you know, you're, you're supposed to belong there. See, you're supposed to belong there and you know how to have a conversation. Um, trying not to, let's see. I'm using so many colors and I don't care. Um, when you're mimicking and camouflaging, you try to lessen the ticks. Um, I didn't realize I had ticks until recently when I had to think about it. Um, at times I, when I'm like, seeing someone and something's exciting I actually would jump up and down did not realize that was a tick I do this a lot or I'll, I'll do this I forget what finger I'll just kind of like like this type of thing when I'm trying to concentrate uh, my son he he does more of a, a a twerking with his with his um arms but he has learned as he's gotten older and we would have our social convo scripts and learn when we're supposed to have our mask on and how to think we're supposed to be there. He has learned how to lower it and um, not have as much for mimicking camouflaging less ticks. So he would feel that he would look normal because he's in a... Um, in a job where he interacts with people. So, but then what, for me at least, when I get home, 
I just, you know, I just let it all go. And that's what he's told me. You know, he, he will, he'll just wait until he gets home and then just be himself. And it's like, well, why not be ourselves at work and whatnot? Well, because it's not sociable accept, acceptable yet, unfortunately. And then also I've noticed when um, I now say, hey, I'm autistic, dut, 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 some of them, they start talking to me like I am, like I'm a little kid. And that kind of upsets me. And I'm like, look, I'm an educated woman. Well, this went for more than 30 minutes. And I don't care. So I was cut off. The last thing I was saying is people find out I'm autistic and they talk to me differently. And I really want to tell them, look, I'm an educated woman. You don't need to talk down to me like that. So I've been a little more assertive and and have shared and explained. And I can't think of the doctor's name right now, but there's a quote that goes around saying, when you've met one autistic person, you've only met one autistic person. Like when my son was diagnosed many, many years ago, the movie Rain Man came out. And so that's what everyone thought. Everyone thought that if you're autistic, that's how you were supposed to act. And prior for me having my son, or prior for me getting diagnosed myself, I worked in the autistic community. I had many clients that had autism. And each one was different. Why? Because they're not, <laughs> they're not identical. Well, even identical twins are different, but you know uh, what I'm trying to get at. Hopefully you can hear me over me erasing this. So it only happened to me once and I was in a social situation where I was supposed to think that I was there and I was supposed to act normal and I was trying to make friends and um, I was mimicking everyone because everyone was, you know, being on their best behavior and it was an event where, you know, I knew people there, they, they cussed, you know, they swore a lot. But not at that event because others didn't like swearing. So this woman told me that she worked, when I said, oh, I'm autistic, oh, well, I work with autistic children. And I'm like, in my brain, I'm like, well, yeah. And guess what? They're going to turn into autistic adults someday. And, and she goes, well, you just don't look autistic, and you know. It's like, are you sure you're autistic? And I'm kind of paraphrasing now because it's kind of a soreness in my side there. And then it's like, what do you, I'm like, I really want to say, I'm sorry, I forgot my autistic shirt, you know. So that's why on Instagram I made a video of like, this is what autism looks like. With lots of pictures of myself. Okay, this has run over 29 minutes. The next one, I'll try not to make as long. But I just wanted to do this in real time, trying something else out. I've been watching other neurodivergent artists who are on the spectrum too and doing this type of video talking about autism and just doing their artwork but this is very sloppy so unacceptable so thank you so much for joining me today and hopefully you learned a little more about what masking as an autistic is and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Until next time, remember, messy hands, happy life. Bye.